Welcome to Digital Asset News, or Dan for short. My name is Rob, and today I'm going to do a little bit something different. I need to uh, bring in more people that, of course, who are smarter than me and can actually give me some really great information. And one of those people that I reached out to was Tom Crown. And Tom, I want to say thanks so much for accepting the invite. Hey, man. Thanks for having me on, Dan. Uh, let me know when you find someone smarter than you to have on. I'd love to have him on, too. <laughs> That's a good one. So if you don't know, Tom's got his own, his own uh, uh, YouTube channel. He's also pretty uh, active on Twitter. I think that's a pretty great guest and does a lot of great things. And one of the things I like about uh, Mr. Crown here is that he doesn't go too heavy or heavy at all into the hype. It's mostly just kind of like my material where I give it to you straight. Sometimes it's, you know, the, the things that you'd want to hear, but most of the times it's just the reality of the situation. So Tom, I want to say, first of all, thanks for doing those types of things and talking and just making things simple for trading. I'm not a trader, so it is interesting to, uh, to watch your content. Yeah. Uh, as soon as I saw your content, I put it, you know, connected the dots and I said, man, we have a lot in common here. Just the rhetoric you were using and honestly, mm -hmm. even just the tone in which you speak during your uh, live streams. It's definitely something I strive for as well, because I think that's really important to the viewers. Uh, if we're freaking out, they're probably freaking out, even if there's nothing to freak out about. So we're, uh, I like to be a voice of reason. And I think you do too. Yeah. Well, perfect. This would actually bring me to my questions. First and foremost, we're going to go over them. Let's see. First, Tom, who are you? How did you get into crypto and who is your information for? Second thing I want to talk about is the market. It's down. I want to just get your quick opinion about where we're going 2023. What's your strategy here as a trader? Because I got to tell you, you guys, your traders confusion is all these different types. And then next to last, I want to have you uh, critique my exit strategy. I did a video not too long ago where I talked about the things that I'm looking for when, during the next bull run and how I can maximize uh, those exits and those profits. And then finally, finally, let's, let's go over some final thoughts on the, and I think this is the biggest part, the mental aspect of trading. Because it's very easy to quote unquote buy the dip and, and buy a little bit and then maybe uh, take a little profit, but the mental aspect to really get into it. So the first thing's first, Tom. Tell us who you are, how you got into crypto, and who is this yeah. information for? <laughs> who am I? I'm, I'm just a, a normal dude. You know, I, I worked mm -hmm. nine to five. I did sales. Um, I went to school for political science. I was really into politics, yeah. not politics, but government, the structure. Sure. And leaving college, I found that everything was kind of a, an illusion. You know, democracy wasn't really how it was pre uh, presented to me things weren't really the way that I thought in the world. And I found myself with very little belief and I just stumbled across cryptocurrency probably in the same way many people do. And I got obsessed with it. It just clicked. I said, this is, you know, it clicked voting. Voting should be done on a blockchain. This is almost yes, what it seems to be for. Uh, this is like the solution to so many of the questions <laughs> that I, I felt weren't really true. And so I was in sales and I got laid off and I had unemployment. And for the first time in my mm -hmm. life, you know, I'd gone from school to school to school to work, job, job, job. I got to sit there and say, what do I want to do? Yeah. And the answer was obvious. I wanted to do, you know, I'm a Bitcoin maximalist. I, a little bit different than what you might think. Don't judge no. me. Um, <laughs> but I can't apply to Bitcoin, right? I can't say, hey, Bitcoin, give me a job. And so I kind of came up with, well, what if I just started streaming? because I see a lot of content on YouTube and on the internet, and there wasn't quite as much then, but um, mm. that I didn't really feel helped the viewer. It didn't really help share at least my passion. It, it kind of didn't set them up for success. And I thought maybe I could help fill that niche. And here I am almost four years later. It's working mm. somehow, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, that's good. It's good you're doing the, the, the non-hype route. But so mm. to, to move on just a little bit, like who is your information for? Like, like for me, I kind of get into, I make things bite-sized pieces. I try to break it down from the complex as simple as best I can, give people information as far as the news and kind of lead them down the path of, of, of what I am doing so they can make their own decision for the best choice for them. So Tom, for your channel, who is this for? Yeah, well, if we look at my demographics, people very similar to myself, kind of 24 mm -hmm. to 35 guys in the US, UK. Um, <laughs> but who's it really for? It's for people who are crypto curious. Um, a lot of my content is a little too, eh, my trading content can be a little complex for people who haven't traded before. I have put out some shorts recently that help address that and fill the gap. They're way more friendly to beginners. But right. really, you know, people curious about crypto. And I do a lot of trading content because 
it's it's stuff to watch. You know, while I'm live, I can do things. Um, it doesn't reflect my personal strategy completely. It is a good bit for content, um, but I think anyone, you know, where do you go to learn about trading? There's there really isn't trading school. You can't go to right. it in college, and so I actually learned a lot of my stuff by watching other people do things live. And I think anyone that's interested in learning a little bit more about trading, probably good content for you. Yeah, and like I will tell you this, I don't do the shorts. We talked about this as far as the, the videos themselves, but like we were talking about beforehand, like this one right here, like you break it down to the most basic principles, kind of like what I do myself as far as like for trading. Like just take a just take a watch of this. There are two ways to enter a trade. A limit order is used when you're not available to monitor the charts. Limit orders allow you to simply set it and forget it. However, these can cause losses if executed without confirmation. A market entry can be a more conservative way of entering trades. As you can see the price action in real time, when price has tagged your point of interest, you want to drop down to a lower time frame and wait for a shift in market structure. You can then enter based on a newly created order block that created a shift in market structure. This can provide you a higher probability of the trade working in your favor. So yeah, so like like stuff like that makes things very super simple. And I can appreciate that, especially for the new person who's getting into crypto and going, well, what is, you know, should I uh, leverage myself 1500x? And maybe should I put all my money into it? Or maybe just do something <laughs> like this. So that kind of answers those questions in those shorts. I like those only 40 seconds or less. Mm -hmm. So Tom, this will be my next one. You're a trader. You've been in the, in, the, in the game for quite some time. The market's sucking, let's be honest. So where, where do you think we're going in 2023? I uh, saw one of your recent live videos. You had uh, Gareth Soloway on. Uh, I believe he thinks that uh, we can go to 12, 13K Bitcoin. I think his worst case scenario might be 5K or something like that. But where are we going from here? And then also, what's your strategy moving forward? Yeah, well, there's definitely many approaches. Uh, something I want to point out. So in that short, it said, you know, a higher probability. Trading mm -hmm. is not magical. It doesn't see the future. It, there's there's no magic bullet. It's all about probability. Um, and so when we were talking, yeah, me and Gareth about lower lows, and it, it, there's always a probability of pretty much any number that you can imagine. Uh, the scary ones tend to come true in both directions. And where we are right now in the market, does not look so strong you know we we hit 15.5k i don't really see a reason that the market would stop there however markets aren't always rational so True. i am even looking at that 13.8 level that's a really solid support it was uh resistance in 2019 when we rallied up off of uh, the 3100 low price right. rejected there it's a good spot to look for support um but into the next year you know we don't know how long these things could take that could that could resolve by the time the video comes out or, you know, it could happen in a year. Uh, timing is something that I really stray away from because it's very difficult. I don't really see kind of positive market action, at least at this moment coming. I think it into like maybe at the start of next year is the earliest, uh, unless we see a major pivot from the Fed or maybe Congress in the U.S. signs into existence a bunch of money. There doesn't really seem to be any super strong catalysts at the moment. So I'm not looking for a really strong quarter four here without, you know, the exception of some kind of white swan. We've had enough black swans. I invite the white swans in. We like all the kinds of swans here. Um, <laughs> but of course, you know, lower, lower than that is possible as well. I'd be looking at 10, five. I don't, I really am skeptical that price will go lower than that. However, I will admit when I'm wrong, I thought the bottom was in at least twice, you know, since last year, and I've been wrong. So it's all about probability. And I think when we get to kind of how we might approach that, I think you're going to really vibe with, uh, with what I would say as well. Yeah. You know what? It's a good point. We, you brought up about, you know, being wrong and the bottom. We just did a show today, uh, DCA with, uh, Ben and James from Best Answers in the Cryptoverse. And one of the things I talked about was, I never thought the bottom was in in June, but I thought it was, wasn't in for a different reason. I thought it was macro events. I thought it was the Fed not pivoting. I thought it was war in Ukraine. I thought it was the supply chain issues. I did not see uh, FTX totally being the biggest rug pull and Bernie Madoff uh, type of play in, in history. So I couldn't see that. I was, I was correct, but I wasn't correct for, for the right reasons. So to me, what that says is that on this one, I got lucky. 
but who knows what's going to happen. And like you said, Tom, like, is there another black swan event? We will welcome some white swans because we haven't had so many. <laughs> but again, so hard to, to know. And that's why what you talk about as far as probabilities, I think, with trading, which makes a lot more sense. Uh, and then for this one, the next part here. Um, so you say maybe 10.5, maybe 13.2. Okay. We know the market's awful right now. Let's look forward into what I think is the next bull market. I have learned my lesson to not do a, uh, any kind of price predictions because those are, I am, I think I'm shooting 25% uh, uh, accuracy on that one. That's not bad. That's not bad. That's not bad, but let me tell you, I, I had some pretty bad calls. I thought Bitcoin was going 150K. I thought Ethereum would go to 10K. Those did not play out too well. Oh, EOS, me too. I thought, yeah. <laughs> I thought higher. You were you're in the more realm of uh, actually happened. I was thinking higher. Well, you know, I, I might jump into this, even though this isn't really our question. Um, sure. I looked at the past cycles and I said, all right, I'm going to look. I had a whole chart and it was like, well, bottom to bottom, we saw this increase and top to top, we saw this increase. And I kind of compared them. We really only had, what, maybe three full cycles, I guess now four. And so my projections were based on what the data we had. And so I kind of compared them, maybe subtract a little off the top. And I was looking for like 300,000. I was, no. I was looking high. Uh, the 69 top really took me off guard. And I learned a lesson here too, is looking back, obviously the past isn't the predictor of the future. Um, yeah. But maybe kind of all these assumptions that we have, I think I'm still in the four year cycle boat, but I think that as time goes on, we're gonna find everything that we know to be true about price is probably gonna end up being false. I think that this cycle was unlike anything we've seen before. Um, and not really in a good way, actually, when it comes to price action, at least in adoption. Yes, but not, not so much in price. Yeah, I have to agree. And who, I mean, there was very few people that, that, uh, saw through the FTX, uh, facade and actually saw for what it was. So for them, I got to give my hat, tip my hat to them and go, it's amazing yeah. that, uh, these things were seen because there were so many different people and it's the same people that are actually also were calling for, I mean, monstrous, uh, blow off top rallies. Uh, for for crypto and digital assets. So again, we'll see how it all works out. But this would lead me to my my question about my exit strategy. So I am not smart enough to figure out the absolute top or the absolute bottoms, nor am I Nostradamus. So I figured to myself, I should just play probabilities and look at a couple of different factors. And I put out this video uh, not too long ago. It was looking right here. It was when and why I'm selling 80% of all my crypto. And you're looking at this right now over on uh, the website, Dan Teaches Crypto. Everybody knows it's 100% free, I don't have to tell them. But on this one, it's, uh, it's rather lengthy for me, over 30 minutes, and I talk about the things I'm looking at as far as Pi Cycle Top, NUPL, well, multiple, MVRBZ score, and different things. So Tom, what I had you did do was to review it before we actually came on. And I need you to critique it and tell me where there are faults in there and how you would correct those faults to make it uh, more comprehensive and better. Absolutely. I, I watched the whole thing more than once. Actually, it was a very solid video. So I don't have that many critiques. So instead, or when I don't have them, I'll fill them in with uh, kind of the alignment of our thinking. And Great. it starts with your Dogecoin millionaire example. And I love it because this is almost it almost seems like you made this video for me, Dan, and I appreciate it. Um, not a millionaire, but I, uh, I've been in the crypto space a long time and I had some doge and it wasn't a crazy amount of doge. Um, I think maybe I invested 150 or $200 in it a few years ago. And yeah. I witnessed, you know, what the Dogecoin millionaire witnessed. I saw that turn into six figures to deep six figures. Wow. And like you, of course, I don't know the bottom and I don't know the top. And in fact, I don't really believe people can know those things. And so you're going to love this. Um, mm. I trade or I trade against Bitcoin mostly, but I guess for this example, I can use it in dollars just to make it simpler, maybe for people watching. Um, okay. So I accepted I don't know the top and no one, no one can. And so what can we do to make sure that we still sell the top? That sounds like a loaded question, but mm -hmm. it is possible. The answer might not be satisfying. Uh, what I did is I essentially took small pieces of my doge and I set limit sell orders up every increment. Uh, I did it against Bitcoin, so it was in sats. I did it every 50 sats. 
I mm. had a small sell order. So I get to say I did sell the top. Uh, oh, I didn't my. sell all of it at the top. You know, I yeah. sold the small amount, but I also sold a small amount all the way up. And it's a really easy strategy for trading is you find your cost average and you can simply just layer selling orders above your cost average. If they fill, you know you're in profit. If they don't, you're sitting there holding the bag. Um, and I did, I held, the, I held that bag for, I wanna say two and a half years, maybe more. So this was not overnight, um, but I, I put myself in my favorite position, which is a win-win position. So as Doge continued to go up, I continue to fill mm -hmm. selling orders. And then when it stopped going up, I was okay. I still had some doge left in case, you know, it exploded even higher. I wasn't going to be like, oh no, I did the wrong thing. I have to throw my money in and then end up getting wrecked on that sure. side. And as it came down, I felt nothing. I felt no fear. I felt no anxiety because I had already taken out uh, at least tenfold what I had put in. And that's an extreme example, of course. That, that's a very lucky example that took, you know, many years to unfold and complete. But that's really my, my take on most trading in general. And my content might go against that because as I said, that is content I do because you can do it in real time. Something like this Doge trade took years. I couldn't do that in a live stream. But that's the majority mm -hmm. of my trading is very kind of slow swing trades. And I use mostly just limit orders and sometimes they'll sit there for years. Sometimes they are still sitting there for years and maybe they'll never fill. Um, but I really like that you used the Doge example because I stuck to my rules. I did it. I made a good profit. I still have some Doge um, and I'm happy either way. You know, if it never goes up again, I'm good. And if it does, I still have some, I can ride that on and uh, be happy. And that brings us to kind of the second point in your video, which is mm. define your type and know your exits. So right. what I like about that strategy is your exits can really just be incremental, almost robotic. You know, you could say every thousand dollars down, and this isn't financial advice, but I'm going to buy X amount of Bitcoin every thousand dollars lower it goes. Well, numbers eventually reach zero, right? You can't go negative. Right. And so that defines it for you. Um, you need to accept that, well, some of these may never fill. You'll be surprised. They do end up filling even the ones you don't think, but um, it allows you really to take the time preference off the table and stick just to the math of it. And that's a concept that's really done well for me over the years. Um, and gotcha. that even lines up with your DCA examples because that isn't DCA based on time, which is the typical DCA, which I think is a great approach mm -hmm. in general, uh, but that's DCA on price. And so it's really just a little twist on that time, uh, you know, time proven method of dollar cost averaging. Uh, you're just choosing a price instead of a time. And at the end of the day, if you have orders that never fill, yeah. basically you just go cancel them and you've lost a little bit of money for the opportunity cost, but you basically, you know, just get your dollars back and maybe you're upset. You didn't quite get as much as you wanted, but that's, that is the most successful strategy I've ever encountered in crypto. And it really does take the, in the moment kind of panic or FOMO feelings off. And I think anytime you do that, you're setting yourself up for success. Excellent. Excellent response. So, so there's two questions that I have. So let's talk about the cost basis. Let's really dig down into it. That's so good. for your cost basis, I know a lot of people have this, this issue too, is for your, do you have a, a specific program that you use for trading that tells you the cost basis? Like Tom, look, you bought, you know, Dogecoin at most of it was at a penny and then some was at a dime. So now you're like around five cents. If you sell it around six cents, you're you know, pr pretty much in the money. Is there some kind of program that you use or is it all in spreadsheets? So you can absolutely do it on a spreadsheet. I think that that, you know, it, it's what you're comfortable with. Uh, you can definitely do it on a spreadsheet. That would take a lot of manual entry. Exactly. There are many, there, there's many software programs out there. I don't want to like really push one. Um, I use, it's just cointracking.info. They don't pay me or anything. There's okay. many of them. Some are free, some are premium. Uh, I like that one. I pay for the premium because I can do API uh, uploads. So it'll track um, my trades on the exchanges I put in. It can even yeah. like track wallet movements. I do, okay. it's more important that you keep track of it. It doesn't really matter the method. Um, mm -hmm. But it's important that you keep track of it because if you don't know your cost basis, you can't know if you're in profit or exactly. if you're in a loss. And that's something people skip over a lot. I think that that's actually something that should be driven home more is keeping accurate accounts is very important to creating a plan. 
Yeah, and I, I got to agree with you. So I'm going to show everybody coin tracking info. Me and Tom did not get paid for this. Uh, there is no affiliate link. I'm not even going to put the link in there. You got to find it yourself. <laughs> yeah, you got to find it. <laughs> kind of tracking that info. And, you know, there you go. That's what it looks like. So you don't get uh, go to the wrong place. But so that that was my first one. Thank you. That makes a lot of sense. The second one is this. With the things that are going on with the exchanges, and I get this question a lot, which is, Rob, I'm, I'm scared to leave anything on the exchanges, but I have to because I have to execute these orders. Is there a way to get around this or is it just like, I got to leave it on there? Or do you just say, well, I leave a little bit to get an alert and then I kind of transfer over and do something else? Or how do you, how can you do it, Tom? Absolutely. Um, yeah, this is going to be different for everyone. But right. for myself, about once a year, I will do like a grand recalling of all of my assets <laughs> from exchange. Yeah. Uh, crap, I can't remember the name of it. The Vatican does something similar. I think every seven years, I just did it. I can't remember the name of it. I wish I did, because that'd be a really smart comment. Uh, but I bring <laughs> everything back to my wallet. Yeah. So that is a problem. And anytime yeah. you have assets on, on an exchange, you have to be aware of the risk and you have to factor mm -hmm. that in. Uh, right now, specifically today, my risk tolerance is way down. If right. I had to have any kind of assets on exchange, which I do have some, like trading bags, um, I would definitely though steer away really from like holding ever on, on an exchange. Um, but from things that aren't really KYC, seed, like I would, you know, I'd go with Kraken, Coinbase. I would go yeah. with the U S regulated mm -hmm. ones, but don't be fooled. Those are not immune to this either. I, I don't think that they're directly involved in any way. I, I think they are likely very solvent, but mm -hmm. the thing is, is you should never have a feeling of, oh, I'm completely safe. I'm comfortable because the fact is you're not. Um, yeah. and so to run into the trading thing, how do I keep these orders active? Well, that's going to be how much risk you're willing to take on. Um, whatever you have on exchange again is at risk. And so you're going to have to make that choice. Are you willing right. to lose it? Is this trade you're looking for worth it? And I can't tell you the answer that's going to come down to each individual, but right now I think I have 97 or 98% of all my crypto assets in, a, in cold storage. There you go. Yeah, there you go. And I think it's it's a good point. We have these rules and the, and the first rule we have is right underneath Tom. It's uh it's all gone, meaning that mm -hmm. you can't invest more than you can afford to lose. So if you're okay with 2%, 3%, 5% or mm -hmm. whatever percentage it is, that is up to you. And we can't tell you what to do. Uh, we are not uh, investment advisors. Uh, I don't think me or Tom or your dad. So we cannot do these things. We cannot help you out. It, it's up to you to make that decision. Excellent points, Tom. Thank you. That makes a lot of sense. The last one, let's come out of this. I think this is the bigger play, the mental aspect, because I've, I've seen your videos, I've watched you, and even you who have done a lot of trading, you've even said, I know I should do this thing, but I can't pull the trigger right now because I'm going to let this ride. You don't say it all the time, but, you, but, but I, I, I've caught you say it, and even <laughs> I have said that going, you know what, I have a plan in place, I just need mm -hmm. to follow this plan, but then I either get too greedy or too fearful. I execute some things, but not like I should. So the mental aspect, Tom, how do we deal with that? It's, it's the number one thing in trading. And I think you could even say that almost nothing else matters. It's a, mm. not a satisfying answer either, but almost nothing else matters. All the indicators, all the numbers and lines, like these things have relevance because they can help us identify some probability, some edges where we might be able to profit. But at the end of the day, Dan, this is what I said before we started is we have a lot in common is it's all about making a plan, setting that plan up and executing it and then not messing with it in between. Yes. And I have years and years of experience trading and Dan, you have years and years of experience investing. And I'm sure you do a little trading too. Uh, and even we, we sometimes can't follow through. It's, it's not easy. It is almost a superhuman feat to be able to control your emotions. Yes. Um, the sentiment, and I said that about Doge, kind of putting myself in a win-win position. I like that because it really takes the pressure off of the mental or the mindset you have because you're thinking, oh, I'm winning in either direction. So I don't need to worry. And right. the more often you can do that, absolutely the more successful you'll be. Um, but even I, live streaming, I, I remember the video, I was like, oh man, I shouldn't, I know I should just close <laughs> this, but uh, I'm not going to. And then like a day later, I was like, well, you told yourself you should have done it. Um, really is, anything you can do, anything you can do to get yourself calm and in a rational mindset because trading does kind of reflect in our body the same way physical motions do. Like if we're confronted by a bear, you're not right. really thinking logically. You're thinking, oh, oh crap, there's a bear. I right. should run, right? 
Right. Um, and in that case, you should run. But in trading, uh -huh. there's no <laughs> there's no physical bear there to eat you. And so I've found almost any time I've made a decision in that fight or flight state, it's been the wrong one. And it has to be like intentional from markets yeah. to trap us into these mindsets where we have to make a decision right now. It has to be a big one. And if I mm -hmm. don't do it, something really bad is going to happen. Well, guess what? If you just stand up, walk away, I say, go take a run, go outside, go just do anything to disconnect with that emotion. Come back, sit down. And if you feel the same way in that logical, calm mindset, then go ahead and go through with it. Very... Mm -hmm. It almost never does that hour time frame totally change what's happening, no matter how much it feels like it in the moment. Usually things are right about where they were an hour later. Um, that's kind of my rule that I, I propose to people. Excellent. Um, using limit orders is a great way to do it uh, yeah. in that little video. Set it and forget it. It's a great way uh, to literally forget about it. And if yeah. you're not remembering it, it's really hard to stress over it. So that's... That's a good way to combat it as well. Yeah, I, I got to tell you, well, there, there's a couple of things. First of all, uh, how many times have you who are watching this video done that? You've you've seen some kind of news event, you've taken a look at the charts, and you've done a little bit too of a hasty decision. It just, it happens more often than not. And then the next thing is, I mean, if you really think about it, these things that, that we have as far as emotions, we can control them, but it just takes a lot of practice. And uh, right now, I think it's important that you have a plan, whether that, that plan be something like, uh, like we talked about here in this exit strategy or the things that uh, Tom had talked about in, in his videos. Either way, there's a way for you to do things, and maybe it's a hybrid of both of it. But the big thing is, is just to find a plan, find something that works for you, and set it and forget it. And before we take off, Tom, let me ask you this real quick. How sweet is it to have those order limits set and then just wake up and haven't have already had it done and you're like wow in profit how does that feel oh it's amazing it okay. it really is an amazing feeling uh it's the delayed gratification right <laughs> that's it's that's the the opposite of what i think people instinctively want they want that instant gratification and i just i've never really it just doesn't work the yeah. more you can delay it for some reason in crypto it just the more successful it seems uh kind of an anecdotal story. I think it was like early 2020, mm -hmm. I had layered buys on Bitcoin every $500 down all the way to the, uh, zero, basically. I had some at like 100. And yeah. I thought, it'll, it'll never fill. We're, we're flying up. We're going to the moon again because everybody thought that at the time. Yeah, and sure. come March 2020, I woke up and I had all these limit orders filled at ah. really low prices. And everyone was like, what? like you're That's so right. you're such a good trader tom and i was like these have sat for two years i'm not mm -hmm. like thank you for saying <laughs> i'm a great trader but in reality i just was patient and i just set these orders and i waited what i did is and maybe this will be really a value add to your audience is hmm. what price will what price would make you uncomfortable what would make you really really kind of scared right yeah throw a limit order there because guess what if price crashes to that number now all of a sudden you may just bought it really really cheap cheaper than you ever thought you'd buy it uh and you're putting yourself then in a position of well this crash maybe is actually good because i was able to accumulate so much of an asset so cheap that i didn't even think it would ever happen um it's really turning the tables on that mentality doing that that is perfect and with that that is a perfect segue to get out of here tom <laughs> you've, you've said it all today thank you so much for coming on the show and everybody if you're looking for uh tom crown and his channel there's a link in the description you can check him out and uh, find all the great information but that is it for today so tom thanks for stopping by we appreciate it thank you man thanks for having me dan all right everybody that's it for today adios <laughs>